Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about full metal crown preparation. It is a very important topic for the theory as well as the practical aspect. Let's start. Coming to the introduction, all metal complete cast crowns should always be considered for the patients requiring restorations for badly damaged posterior teeth. These are the pictures showing the cast metal crowns. And the longevity is also very superior to the other face restorations. And the crowns which can be used to restore a single tooth or as a retainer for a fixed dental process. As the name suggests, it can cover all the axial walls and the occlusal surfaces of the tooth. Here, this picture shows the full metal restorations which act as a retainer for fixed partial benches. This arrow mark shows the occlusal rust. And here the complete cast crowns which is used to restore the molar teeth subjected to high loads. And here the canine and premolars are more visible and loaded to a lesser extent. And so it is restored with the metal ceramic crowns. Okay. Which are the indications for complete cast crowns? The complete cast crown can be indicated on heavily restored teeth that have extensive coronal destruction by caries or trauma. And the restoration of choice whenever the maximum retention and resistance are needed. And also it is indicated for the endodontically treated posterior teeth. Then the existing restoration then if there is a necessity for maximum strength and retention to provide contours to receive a removal appliance. Other recontouring of the axial surfaces such as minor corrections of malinclinations and the occlusal plane corrections. These are the various indications for complete cast crowns. And which are the contraindications? Actually, the complete cast crown is contraindicated if the treatment objectives can be met with more conservative restoration. And if there is no need for maximum retention, the complete cast crown is contraindicated. And if there is a aesthetic requirement, that is if the aesthetic need is high for the anterior teeth or for posterior teeth in the aesthetic zone, complete cast crown is contraindicated. So these are the various contraindications for complete cast crowns. Which are the advantages for the complete cast crowns? The complete cast crown strength is superior to that of other restrictions. And it have higher retentive qualities as well as it is usually easy to obtain adequate resistance form to. Then it can facilitate modification of the occlusion and the tooth form is also possible. Which are the disadvantages of the full metal crowns? Actually the preparation for complete cast crowns involves all the coronal surfaces. Thus the removal of tooth structure is extensive and can have adverse effects on the pulp and periodontia. And the vitality testing is not readily feasible. And the display of metal which associated with the complete cast crowns may be objectionable. And in patients with a normal smile line, such restorations may be restricted to the maxillary molars, mandibular molars and premolars. This picture shows the complete cast crowns which is used to restore the molar teeth which is subjected to high lots. Here the canine and premolars which are more visible and are loaded to a lesser extent. 
because of their more anterior arch position and have been restored with the metal ceramic crowns. Okay. Here, this is called fluting. Fluting of the buccal walls of the maxillary and mandibular for small hours to enable better access to the furcations. For the plaque control to improve the long term prognosis of the restorations. Fluting is otherwise known as barley. This is the fluting or barley. And in this picture it shows it can be used as retainers also to accommodate a mandibular partial removal dental process. And the metal ceramic crowns have been placed on the mandibular left canine and the maxillary first molar. Not the occlusal rest. This arrow mark shows the occlusal rest and the survey contours which extend to form reciprocating gate planes. Recommended criteria for a complete cast crown. Here, this is the recommended minimal dimensions for a complete cast crown. Here, the minimum recommended clearance for a complete cast crown is 1 mm on the non-functional cusp and 1.5 mm on the functional cusp. So, the functional cusp in the mandibular it is buccal and in maxillary it is palatal or lingua. And the occlusal clearance should be 1.5 mm or later. On non-functional cusp the clearance should be at least 1 mm. And here the chamfer margin it should allow for approximately 0.5 mm of metal thickness at the margin. Here the buccal wall of the maxillary molar is prepared in two plates. Okay. So this is the buccal wall. This is the lingual or palate. Here is the maxillary and this is the mandibular. And what is the difference between clearance and protection? What is clearance? Clearance is the amount of space between the completed preparation and the opposing tooth. And the reduction is that the amount of tooth structure which is removed to establish the desired clearance. So this is the recommended minimal dimensions for a complete cast crown. Okay. These are the special considerations. That is functional or centric cusp bevel. Here reasonably uniform tooth reduction which results in a preparation that mimics the form of an original clinical crown. This picture shows the anatomic occlusal reduction which is conservative of tooth structure and it provides rigidity to the restoration. showing the functional cusp bevel the proper placement is very important here this is the functional cusp bevel which is prepared by slanting the rotary instrument at a flatter angle this dashed line shows the functional cusp bevel and it ensures the necessary clearance over the functional cusp This is the non-functional cusp bevel. In the complete crown preparations should be assessed for adequate reduction at the occlusal axial line angles of the non-functional cusp. And in this location, the metal thickness must be at least 0.6 mm for the adequate strength. The maxillary molars often require additional reduction in this area. Here the first black line of prop sits on the shoulder and this is picture shows the configuration of facial wall of maxillary molars which may necessitate the slight additional reduction in the occlusal half to prevent over contouring of the restoration. And this reduction is termed as a second plane reduction. Okay. All dimensions is in millimeters. This is the functional cusp bevel which extends to include the occlusal third of the preparation hut. This is the lingual and this is the buccal.
coming to various steps in preparing a tooth for a full coverage metal crown. These are the various steps that is occlusal reduction and function cusp bevel, axial reduction, proximal reduction, finishing and evaluation and the buckle seating group. Before the preparation is begun, the index is made. Here this is the putty index. To have a positive check on the amount and configuration of the tooth preparation. And this is a good gate for the beginner. What is its procedure? Half a scoop of base of elastomeric impression putty material is needed with the catalyst paste or activator and adapted over the tooth to be prepared. Covering the entire tooth structure and at least one adjacent tooth. One set the index is removed and cut into label and lingual half with a BB blade and each of these is again divided into occlusal and gingival half. Once tooth preparation is completed, the index is used to verify the amount of reduction. Here the verification of the preparation with the use of an index. Okay. Armamentarium for the full metal crown preparation. Tapered tungsten carbide burr or diamond is used for occlusal guiding grooves and additional retentive features. Then round ended diamond is used for occlusal guiding grooves. Narrow round ended tapered diamond regular bridge 0.8 mm is used for occlusal reduction, axial alignment grooves, axial reduction and chamfer margin preparation. Then wide round ended tapered diamond fine grit 1.2 mm it is used for finishing. Utility wax and wax caliper. Then occlusal reduction gauge, it is used for verification of occlusal clearance. And high and low speed friction grip counter angle hand pieces are also used. According to Schillingberg, these are the armamentarium that is hand piece. Number 171L bar, coarse grit ground, round ended tapered diamond, fine grit round ended tapered diamond, medium grit short needle diamond, coarse grit tapered torpedo diamond, fine grit Paper torpedo diamond and red utility wax. Coming to the tooth preparation in detail. First one is occlusal reduction and functional cusp diva. Here it is the complete cast crown which is indicated on this mandibular second molar with occlusal proximal and cervical lesions as well as the buccal longitudinal fracture. Here the initial depth grooves placed for occlusal reduction. Now that they have not been extended onto the buccal surface where the functional cusp bevel will be placed. These are the guiding grooves which are placed on the occlusal surface and they are deeper on the functional cusp and for the functional cusp bevel. They diminish in depth from the cusp tip to the cervical margin. So grooves are deeper for the functional cusp. So depth orientation grooves are placed on the occlusal surface of tooth to provide an easy reference to determine where, when the reduction is sufficient. After the gating grooves are placed, the occlusal reduction is performed. Here, the occlusal reduction is performed. Either the mesial or distal half is maintained initially as a reference to facilitate evaluation of adequacy of the reduction. So half of the occlusal reduction is performed, other half is maintained for the reference purpose. Here the reduction gate can be made from a diagnostic waxing procedure which can be used during the tooth preparation to evaluate whether the optimal reduction has been achieved. Here the opposite reduction is using coarse grit round and tapered diamond and number 171 elbow. So the preparation of for a full coverage crown is begun with the occlusal reduction creating 
1.5 mm of clearance on the functional and 1 mm on the non-functional cusp. Here the depth cuts are placed on the occlusal grooves. These depth cuts should follow the anatomic contour of the tooth. And these depth cuts are placed on the triangular ridges. Here it is the completed occlusal preparation checked with the index. This is the completed occlusal reduction using round and tapering diamond. Okay. Here this is the functional cusp bevel using coarse grit round ended tapered diamond and number 171 elbow. Here is the wide bevel which is placed on the functional cusp again using this round and tapered diamond. And the depth orientation grooves are also helpful in obtaining this reduction. This functional cusp bevel which is placed on the facial inclines of mandibular facial cusp and the palatal inclines of the maxillary palatal cusp. It is an integral part of the occlusal reduction. Failure to place this bevel can produce a thin casting or poor morphology in the restoration. Okay. Here, round and tapered diamond is used to give a functional cusp bevel at an angle of 45 degree. Here, the functional cusp bevel at an approximate width of 1.5 mm. This is the completed function plus we were using a round and tapering diamond. And this is the wax caliper which is used for checking occlusal clearance. Now the angulation of the burr as the function cusp is uh, cusp bevel is placed. Here the angle is slightly flatter than the original cusp angle to provide more clearance for the centric cusp than for the axial wall. Here it is a completed occlusal reduction. It follows the normal occlusal form. Three distinct slopes can be seen buccolingually. Here the evaluation of adequacy of the occlusal clearance. When the patient closes the teeth into softened wax, and after the wax has been removed from the mouth, its thickness is assessed visually and measured with the wax caliper. Here the occlusal clearance can be judged intraorally with the reduction gauge. This is the reduction gauge and this instrument has two spherical tips. One that is 1.5 mm in diameter and other one is 1 mm in diameter. This is the occlusal clearance measuring reduction gauge. Okay. So as we already said the functional cusp bevel is placed on the palatal inclines of the maxillary palatal cusp and buccal inclines of the mandibular buccal cusp. Adequate bulk of the material in area of the heavy occlusal contact. When the lack of functional cusp bevel, it will cause thin area in casting, over contouring or over inclination. So the next step is axial reduction. This prepares the facial and lingual or palatal surface. And the depth of the preparation is 0.8 to 1 mm and 0.3 to 0.5 mm cervically. And the instrument is used that is round and tapering diamond. Here the depth cut occlusal contour and the depth cut following cervical contour showing half diamond sunk in which is parallel to the path of insertion. So the technique for the axial reduction is similar to that for the occlusal reduction. And the residual islands of the tooth structure between the alignment grooves are removed. Okay, and the chamfer margin is created. Here the narrow round-ended 
diamond is used for the preparation okay when placing these grooves keep reduction to minimum at the tip of a diamond so here these are the alignment grooves for the axial reduction which are placed in the buccal and lingual surfaces which is parallel to the long axis of the tooth buccolingually and the mesiodistal and they are deep occlusally but shallow toward the cervical margin so here it is deep occlusally okay and shallow toward cervical So here it is the facial and lingual axial reduction using coarse grit tapered torpedo diamond. Here the diamond is lined parallel to the long axis of the tooth as the buccal guiding grooves for the axial alignments are placed. And here the six grooves are placed. Okay. If the axial reduction is completed first on either the distal or mesial half of the tooth, the evaluation is simplified because the remaining intact half of the tooth can serve as a reference. Here the alignment of the diamond as the tooth structure between alignment grooves is removed. This is the axial reduction. The distal buccal axial reduction have been completed. Distal buccal area. Okay. As the mesial buccal axial surface is reduced, chamfer uh, chamfer margin. Okay, here the seven buccal chamfer margin is placed, and the chamfer margin should be of relatively even width, and maintain somewhat rectangular preparation outline form to enhance resistance form. depth cut occlusal contour here it is the depth cut following cervical contour showing half diamond sunk in which is parallel to the path of insertion three such grooves are placed equally spaced along the facial and lingual surface and the gingival termination should be established with the depth cut and it should be placed supra gingivally on the enamel here the preparation parallel to the path of insertion and the completed depth cut showing supra gingival placement okay and the remaining tooth structure between the depth cut is then removed using round and tapering diamond and the preparation is extended till the junction of facial and proximal surface here it is the completed buccal reduction occlusal view and this is the buccal view and this is the picture showing verification of the preparation using putty index the facial reduction is checked with the putty index and a similar procedure is adopted for preparing the lingual surface these are the depth orientation grooves on the lingual surface this is the completed lingual preparation that is lingual view here it is a completed facial and lingual preparation this is the occlusal view it is verified with the putty index and this is the completed axial reduction using round and tapering diamond okay and this is the lip of enamel which protects the adjacent tooth from iatrogenic damage as the axial reduction is completed so as the axial reduction is performed eventually a small island of tooth structure will remain in the interproximal area when removing this it maintain a narrow lip of tooth structure between the diamond and adjacent tooth to protect the lateral from damage and this picture shows breaking the proximal contact to next step that is proximal reduction
This is the proximal axial reduction which is using medium grit, short needle and coarse grit taper torpedo diamond. And this prepares the mesial and distal surfaces. Depth of preparation is 0.8 to 1 mm and 0.3 to 0.5 mm cervically. Short thin tapering diamond or needle diamond followed by round thin tapering diamond. And care should be taken to protect the adjacent teeth. The matrix band can be used as described in this figure. And the mouth mirrors are used to retract the cheek and tongue to avoid their damage. And thin tapering diamond is used in a vertical sawing motion in an occlusal gingival direction from facial to the lingual surface. Placing the diamond parallel to the long axis of the tooth and keeping a lip of enamel for protection to the adjacent teeth. And this portion can later be removed with a prop. Okay. So the proximal tooth preparation using thin tapering diamond leaving a lip of enamel for protecting adjacent tooth. And the lip of enamel can be removed with a prop. This is a lip of enamel which is produced using thin tapering diamond. Okay. Now there is adequate space proximally to use a round and tapering diamond and the surface is prepared to its required dimensions with a 0.3 to 0.5 mm chamfer. So here it is completed proximal reduction, occlusal view and this is a facial view. And this is the completed proximal reduction using short thin tapering diamond and the round end tapering diamond. Next step that is finishing and evaluation. Chamfer and axial finishing is used with fine grit tape, tapered torpedo diamond. Axial surfaces are finished using a torpedo diamond of fine grit or torpedo bar and the occlusal finishing is used with flattened tapering fissure bar. And the next step is the buckle sitting groove. And buckle sitting groove, it prevents the rotation of the crown during cementation and act as a gate during placement. When opposing walls are excessively tapered, in chipped teeth and long span fixed partial dentures, the additional grooves may be placed. And the depth of preparation is 1 mm. The flat and tapering fissure bar is used. It is placed in the center of the facial surface parallel to the path of insertion. This is the seating groove which is parallel to the path of insertion and this is the prepared seating groove. Occlusive view. This is the buckle view. And this is a complete buckle seating groove using a flattened tapering fissure bar. This is the seating groove number 171 elbow. Note that the adequate clearance that is more than 6.6 uh, .6 mm which exists between the external surface of the proximal chamfer margin and the adjacent tooth. This is the occlusal view of the preparation and the transition from lingual to occlusal surface is rounded with a fine grid diamond. All the sharp angles between the occlusal reduction and functional cusp bevel are similarly rounded. And the margins are refined and uh, any remaining irregularities are removed. This is the completed preparation. The carious lesions have been excavated and the resulting irregularities have been restored with the amalgam. This is the buccal appearance and this is the occlusal appearance. 
and this is the completed preparation which is characterized by smooth even chamfer margin 6 degree taper and gradual transitions between all prepared surfaces this is the acrylic resin interim restoration which is placed and cemented here the complete cast crown is cemented in the this is the occlusal view and this is the buccal view and these are the features of a mantubular full metal crown preparation and the function served by each planar occlusal reduction that is structural durability axial reduction that is retention and resistance and structural durability chamfer margin that provides marginal integrity and periodontal preservation then buccal sitting groove retention and resistance and functional cusp be well structural durability and coming to the summary and by summarizing complete cast crown which are the indications extensive destruction from caries or trauma endodontically treated teeth existing restoration necessity for maximum retention and strength to provide contours to receive a removable appliance other recontouring of the axial surfaces that is minor corrections of malinclinations and correction of occlusal plane what are the contraindications no need for maximum retention then aesthetics what are the advantages strong high retentive qualities usually easy to obtain adequate resistance form option to modify form and occlusion and the disadvantages are removal of large amount of tooth structure adverse effects on tissue vitality testing is not readily feasible and display of matter and which are the preparation steps depth grooves for occlusal reduction taper tungsten carbide or diamond is used minimum clearance of on non centric cusp is 1 mm function cusp be well using taper tungsten carbide or diamond minimum clearance on centric or functional cusp is 1.5 mm occlusal reduction half at a time regular grit round ended diamond flatter than cuspal plane to allow additional reduction at functional cusp alignment grooves for axial reduction using tapered diamond following normal anatomic configuration of occlusal surface axial reduction half at a time tapered diamond chamfer margin allows 0.5 mm of thickness of wax at margins finishing of chamfer margin tapered diamond reduction performed parallel to the long axis additional retentive features if needed using wide round ended diamond or tungsten carbide smooth mesial distally and buccolingually resistance to vertical displacement by tip of explorer or periodontal prop then finally by finishing using taper tungsten carbide fine grit diamond or finishing tungsten carbide grooves boxes pin holes as described for partial coverage restorations rounding of all sharp line angles to facilitate impression making die pouring waxing and casting The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing by watch this. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel for more videos.